<laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Kyla from Hidden Gems Literary Emporium, your family-owned nonprofit community bookstore. And back again for the second time on our Ask the Author series, we have Mr. S. Jones Marshall, who has multiple books of poetry out. But this today, we're talking about this beautiful book of poetry called Insightful Thoughts. The first interview, if you go on our website, you'll see our first interview with Mr. Jones Marshall about his book, Strength in the Mind. And so we're happy to have you here again. Stu has become a great friend to the bookstore and our family. And so thank you so much for being here and for your time today. Anything to help you. Oh, and anything to help you too. And you, you're from, why do I always forget? Oklahoma or Ohio? Oh, <laughs> Ohio. Okay. Uh, joining us all the way from Ohio. So we appreciate you. And so for those of you who did not see the first video, Mr. Jones Marshall, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself again. Tell us a little bit about your story and what inspired this book, Insightful Thoughts. I'm a almost 40 year survivor of a traumatic brain injury. And I mean, I'm just trying to change the world. So sweet and to the point. Um, <laughs> How do you feel, why do you feel that poetry can change the world? How can poetry change the world? Well, if people take the time to read it and concentrate on it, it, it can change their mind or the way they look at a situation. And so how has poetry changed your mind or your perspective on life or the various topics that you talk about in both of your books, Strengthen Your Mind and Insightful Thoughts? Um, and how has poetry changed your perspective and or your life after you went through the accident? Well, I mean, I've written poetry for almost, I'd say, um, about 45 years. So, I mean, I mean, it's a great stress reliever, and I mean, it keeps me from having to be in a rubber room. What's a rubber room? Oh, the kind you, the kind you get with a straight jacket. Oh, that rubber room. <laughs> got it. Um, yeah, I got it. And I agree with what you're saying as far as poetry being a great form of expression. My husband and I also write poetry and it's, it's a very creative and expressive way on how to talk about things that sometimes people don't wanna talk about. Sometimes it's hard to talk about or it's emotional. Um, question, do you remember the, the first poem that you wrote after you came out of your coma? Well, the, the first poem I wrote was probably six years after coming out of the coma. And I mean, it, it was Love, love is like a rose so frail, 
and beautiful, give it love and affection. It will bloom for a lifetime, but deny it any love or affection. It will wither and die. I'm, as you're reciting that poem, I'm thinking, why do I remember that poem? And I think you recited that same one in our last interview, did you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you memorize all of your poems? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. That one is special because that one is the first one I ever got published. Wow. You should make bookmarks with that on there. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, j well, the reason why I say that is, of course, it's a beautiful poem with a beautiful message, but it's the first poem that you wrote after this life-changing event that you went through and survived and came out of. And so I think it would be a powerful message uh we should we should talk about that later okay um let's <laughs> talk about like, both thoughts um so you talk a lot about let me back up this book is similar but also different to strengthen the mind when i was reading it you talk a, a lot more about love and also heartbreak the, the, the emotions that you go through with love. you talk, It seems you talk more about that in this book than Strength in the Mind. Would you agree or disagree, though? Yeah, I'd agree. Okay. Um, what would you say is one of your... I mean, I have several or maybe many... <laughs> start in here but what would you say is one of your favorite poems out of this book insightful thoughts or one that stands out to you the most I know I always ask poets this question and they always say it's like or maybe maybe you said this last time someone some poet said that it's like trying to tell them which one of their children is the favorite well I mean like I said, I've written poetry for almost, no, almost 45 years. So, I mean, with all the poems that I've wrote, Picking one of them is not possible. I get it. I and I I ask that question to poets a lot, and they all say the same thing. But sometimes I'm I'm thinking, you know, maybe someone will have a favorite poem. But I I just flipped open to one of the poems that I starred actually and it's on page three and if you don't mind i would like to read it but fine okay it's called impact living with a disability does not only impact that person but the person's family the community that person lives in can grow into a more accepting place if it chooses to look at the disabled as an integral part of their society. Hmm. I like, I start, I start that poem because the title is called Impact, but the theme of impact kind of, so when I read it, of course, you're thinking about the impact that people who are living with a disability have on their family, the impact that the family members have on that person, the impact that that person has on their community at large and vice versa, and how we can all impact the communities we live in by, as you said, being more accepting and growing, growing into a more accepting place. 
Yep. <laughs> I mean, I totally agree with you. I mean, people, well, some people cannot get out of their own minds. They cannot expand their viewpoints. I agree. And books like this, I think, and, and as we going back to the importance of poetry, poetry in general is a good tool to help people be more open-minded and accepting and to be honest, compassionate, loving, caring to other people. True. True. Truth, <laughs> like our son, right? Truth. Um, okay, I wanna read another poem. The reason why I'm reading this one is because <laughs> this is one of the poems that Ray and I stopped at and had a good conversation about. <laughs> it's called Life. You remember that poem, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's like, I've written hundreds of poems. I don't remember. Okay, well, I'm gonna, here's, here it goes. Life. I have learned my life is controlled by society. Even when I try to forge my own way, I keep getting snapped back into alignment by society and the way it thinks I should live. I know there's so many people who can relate to that poem still. No, I'm glad, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, from dealing with me like you have, would you say that I allow society to snap me back that hard? Absolutely not. Because you know you've you've been through a lot in your life, especially with the accident. I know we talked about you eventually writing a book talking more about the accident, what happened, and I think that will also inspire a lot of people. But you had a choice to make. You know, when you recovered, you could have went one way or you could have went the other. And like you said, and like we talk about all the time, you choose to speak about your story, write about your story, share your story, inspire people through the things that you went through and all in hopes of changing people's perspective, um, motivating people who have also been through traumatic injuries and showing them an example of happiness and joy and just fulfillment of life. So I think that's really important. Yeah. So you crack me up. You you are so short, sweet, and to the point. Well, would you rather me beat around the bush? You know it's, it's like people go, why are you so direct? It's like if I beat around the bush, I'd forget what I was thinking when I started off. <laughs> What's something that you would tell someone? Let's say you're somewhere regular. Maybe you're at the grocery store. And maybe you're in line, you're behind someone and you start chit chatting over something random, like a bag of chips. And then the person in front of you, you know, they start telling you about something that they've been through. Maybe they also had an accident where they were hospitalized or had a brain injury or something like that. And they're telling you, you know, I don't think I can ever live a fulfilled life or I don't think I can ever truly recover from this. Uh, what would you tell this person? This is a complete stranger. What would you tell them to motivate them to make it to the next day? I mean, the way you perceive life, you can either be happy or sad. It's all up to you. 
if if you want to move forward, then you'll move forward. But I mean, I've known a lot of people, both disabled and non-disabled, that get in the what if game, and it's like I've never allowed myself to do that because I've still got way too many people to knock off their little trolley. I know that's right. <laughs> you got, you you got a you have a lot of changes to make in this world. We all do. Mm. There was a one thing I like about your poetry in general is just like you in conversation, it's short, sweet, and to the point, but very impactful. And like you said in the beginning of this interview, when we're reading poetry, and if we take a moment to take our time when we're reading it, and also self reflect on the words that are said, it can really have a long standing effect on the way that we think, not only when we're reading the book, but just in life in general. And so I'm looking at this one poem and I'm not gonna read all the poems because I want people to come in and get the book. <laughs> but I do have a lot of stars. So now I'm on page 97 and the poem is called Road. And it says, there are many turns in the road of life where, you occasion where occasionally you must pull off the road to smell the flowers, knowing you only pass this way once. Isn't that the truth? I mean, you could look at my life and say that, but it's like I've still got way too much to do to allow myself to get stuck when I get off the road to just sit there and mull over the small stuff. It's like me and you have talked. I've got too many other things to be doing to allow myself to do that. Mm-hmm truth yeah i completely agree and ray and i try and keep that mindset as well and especially when you're in the atmosphere and environment and mindset of helping people what can i do to help just help people in general and i tell people all the time you know you think oh, well, I need a lot of money to do this or to solve this issue. But it's really the small things, you know, even think about, I'm thinking about that young lady that came in and got your other book, Strength in the Mind, for her dad, who was a recovering or in the process of recovering yeah. from a brain injury. How much of a large impact did that book have on her dad, herself, her family, uh, you never know. And I hope that we hear from them again. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an amazing testimony that happens after that. I mean, I try and help people see that, hey, guess what? If you get knocked off the side of the road, you just have got to get right back on and carry on because you can't just sit and stew about the problem. Yeah, no pun intended, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
where can people because you have a lot going on there's a lot of new things and avenues that are going to be happening where can people stay connected with you online um learn more about your books and some of the other amazing work that you're doing dreambuilding82.com and dreambuilding82 is the name of your organization right yep <laughs> Okay. And I want to, I want to encourage everyone once again for the second time, because we all know that Stu has been on this segment before, maybe, maybe it was around two months now. Um, no, it was one month exactly. Was it really? Yes. Is that why you picked this day? How did yes. you Oh, you cracked me up. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> a lot has happened in the last month then. Yeah, I mean, you just, I like to stay moving. And I think you know from talking to me, I don't, I very rarely stop mm -hmm. to examine where I have been. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you have lives to touch and um, stories to tell and testimonies to share. So, and I really appreciate you for just being who you are, for the work that you do, for making the decision after you came out of the hospital to write poetry again and share your poetry with the world is very important and i want to encourage everyone who's watching this video to come by well we're gonna work on that we're gonna put this because we have this copy but this is my copy of course i'd be willing to share <laughs> um you know but we're also going to put your books on our bookshop account. So if anyone would like to support us, maybe they're not in town, you can go to bookshop slash, slash shop slash Hidden Gems Literary Emporium and see a whole bunch of books that you can order. And so if you're okay with that, Stu, we would love to put this book on. That is fine. I mean, I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. It's the, it's, that's the absolute least we could do. Um, so again, and also Strengthen Your Mind, that is another really great book. Now, Stu has a lot of poetry. I'm sure he's going to be putting out a lot more books. <laughs> Stay connected with Stu and also myself. And we have some exciting things that we're going to be doing together. So we're going to be sharing that all with you guys very soon. Um, Stu, I want to thank you for your time today, as always, and I want to encourage everyone to be insightful with their thoughts and to strengthen their mind and to come mm -hmm. out and support Hidden Gems Literary Emporium, your family-owned nonprofit community bookstore. And just like that on cue, Truth and Ray walk back. Remember when we started, I told you they were <laughs> yeah. passing out books. Um, thank you, Stu, for your time today. And I'm sure that I will be speaking with you again very soon about all of these developments. We're not going to talk about it now, but everybody stay tuned to what we're doing. And um, we love you all for reading. Stu, do you have any last words? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Short, sweet, to the point. Okay, thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you all soon. Mm -hmm.